Red Jeep Tours presents In the Kitchen with Chef Andrew Copley and Friends. Brought to you by Exotic Motor Cars and Cornerstone Insurance. Welcome to Copley's in Palm Springs. You know, for the last 18 years, I've had the pleasure of being able to cook in this former Kerry Grant estate. But it's not where I started. And I've had so many great mentors to help me along in my career. I remember one distinctly. He took me from the countryside of north of England when I couldn't cook to the hustle and bustle of London, the capital city of England. I was able to work in some five-star establishments, learn my techniques, and be mentored all the way along. And for that, I'm very, very grateful. But now, now times have changed, and I'm still passionate about cooking, and I'm passionate to share. So now, I want to share the joy of cooking with you, my friends. Sky, we're going to have so much fun cooking with friends. Yes. Oh, Andrew, it is so good to be your friend. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Welcome, everybody, to another session of Cooking with Friends with Chef Andrew Copley. Today, I have a good friend who is also a chef, too. He's a more of a Greek-style Mediterranean chef. But let me introduce you to Chef Chris from that famous, famous Greek restaurant on 111. I just have to learn to pronounce it correctly. It's Koutoukis, is that right? Koutouki, yeah. Now, what does that actually mean? It actually means hideaway. It's a place where people used in the olden days to hide things, to hide treasures, stuff like that. So it's a hideaway, a getaway place. Oh, excellent. So I'm going to put together a, a Greek style or Mediterranean style lamb dish. Chris is going to give me some compliments to go with it. And then together we're going to make these little ricotta cheese dumplings. So the first thing I want to do is get some hot salted boiling water, a pan of water ready to cook these dumplings. So I have it on the back stove here. I've got it on a simmer because we don't need it right away, but we're going to start basically uh, to make the dough mix first. So the ingredients for this is super simple. We are going to use flour, some chopped fresh basil and parsley. I've got some fresh herbs I chopped. I have some ricotta cheese. I'm gonna use some uh, Reggiano cheese in there too. And then we're gonna bind that with an egg. A little salt and pepper, and that's our dumpling made. So let's start with some of the wetter ingredients. So we're gonna start with the ricotta cheese, and then we're gonna add one egg. To start drying it out now, I'm gonna add the Parmesan cheese, and I'm just gonna add about, oh, about half a cup. And then for the flour, I need a full cup of flour. So I'm gonna measure this out, because I have more than a cup of flour. I need the rest of the flour to dust the table so we can roll out these dumplings. All right, if you uh, wanna start mixing that for me, Chris. So I'm gonna start gradually adding this cup of flour. I'm also gonna throw in these freshly chopped herbs too. So the next step with these dumplings is we're gonna do a little test. We're gonna to test to see what the consistency is. So here's what I do. I'm gonna first put a little bit of flour on my granite or table here, and then I'm gonna cover my hands, and I'm just gonna take a little of the, the dough and see how it rolls and see how it forms uh, in my hands to see what the consistency will be like. So what I'm looking for is kind of like a Play-Doh consistency. So this is the perfect consistency. It doesn't break and it doesn't stick to my hand. So let's do this. Let's split that in half. So I like to do this with my son Maddox. We just roll these out, we play around, and it makes him feel like he's actually cooking. They don't need to be perfect because they're handmade. You want your friends to know that you made them. You didn't buy these, you made them yourself. But once I get to that rope about six, seven inches long, then we do the counting thing with the kids. So I pop it up and I go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, good. So have a look at these, everybody. What we've done is we've made these little round dumplings and then we're going to squeeze them, keep them in a nice shape like that. And again, they're just homemade, so they're going to look nice and fun. What I want to do is I want to chill them down and that will enable me to move them around before I cook them, okay? And uh, they won't fall apart on us. So let's just put these in the refrigerator or the freezer, uh, and only for about five minutes or so, just to give them a bit of a chill. Um, if you don't mind giving that a quick wipe, Absolutely. I'll put them in, and then we're gonna look at what you're gonna make. 
Absolutely. Let's okay, go. let me put these in. Looking for a safe and fun outdoor adventure? Then let Palm Springs' world-famous Red Jeep Tours transport you to a desert wonderland. Choose from a variety of exciting adventures. Journey through the bones of the earth on our signature San Andreas Fault Tour at our private and exclusive Matate Ranch. Explore narrow-walled slot canyons, a natural palm oasis, and learn about local Native American culture. Red Jeep Tours, offering experiences that engage, educate, and entertain since 1988. Cornerstone Insurance Services is an independent brokerage firm that represents dozens of insurance carriers for all lines of insurance. We want to be your personal insurance agent to help navigate your best options and benefits. Hey Jan. Hi Chef. Look, for my restaurant, I need a professional chopping knife, I need a timer, and I need a thermometer. Okay. Plus gifts. Well, we know how you love our world-famous choppers. Yes. I'm definitely going to need two of those. I already have some wrapped just for you, Andrew. Okay. And we also have some beautiful Nora Fleming pieces I want to show you, okay? Yeah, then? let's have a look. When Coachella Valley chefs are looking for that special knife or gadget, they come to Kitchen Kitchen in Indian Wells. And there's all your gifts. Thanks, Jen. I knew you'd have everything I needed. Kitchen Kitchen, for the chef in you. Welcome to Gelato Granucci, the little shop with the big flavors. Where our brilliant flavor designers bring you the art of gelato. Flavors like coffee, strawberry, salted caramel, cookie shot cones, gelato bars, and gelato cannolis. And now Gelato Granucci can be featured at your special event. Our scrumptious gelato will be served to your guests from our vintage cart. See you soon at Gelato Granucci in downtown Palm Springs. Hi, I'm Henry. And I'm Steve. Together we represent exotic motor cars here in Palm Springs. For the last 30 years, we've been the Valley's leading supplier of pre-owned exotic, luxury and classic cars. Don't just dream it, drive it. All right, Chris, so we've cleaned up this flour and everything from the ricotta cheese dumplings. Now we're gonna make your dish, so tell me what you're gonna make. We're gonna make a traditional dipping dish that people use all over Greece for yeah. all different reasons. It's called yeah. tzatziki. Yeah, So love it. To the Greeks, this is what we like to call the Greek ketchup. They use it for everything. They use it for salads, they use it for pitas, they use it for meats. So you brought this ingredients in, and for me, that yogurt looks, it looks really, super, look super how thick, thick that is. So, wow. people forget to realize that Greeks make yogurt different than everybody else. They don't strain it, they actually press the water out of it, which is a big, big deal. So this is a full fat 10% yogurt that you have here. Oh, and wow. like you said, how it's thick, that keeps the consistency when you start adding lemon juice, oils, cucumbers, which are very watery, as yeah, we both know. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna see it, it won't lose the, its consistency when you start adding all of these wet yeah. ingredients to it. So first, that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna put the yogurt in there and it's a very basic, very simple dish. I minced the garlic before I came, of course. Again, there's some mint here, salt, pepper, some dill. We're just gonna throw a little bit in there. Second most important ingredient is cucumbers. The Greeks love cucumbers, stuff. don't they? I think it's because in years and years and years of going on, that's just one thing that's been consistent. Yeah. Cucumbers have always grown there, yeah. so they use it for a lot of dishes, and of course, it's very healthy for you. Yeah. And then we're just gonna put a little dash of lemon juice. Uh-huh. And, of course. Greek like, olive oil. Olive oil's in everything. Yeah. Look at the richness on that oil, too. And while we finish this up, we'll throw this in the fridge so that we can keep it cold while you're making and your lamb. Can, yeah, yeah. You can pull out those dumplings. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah. So what we're gonna do then, like Chris said, we're gonna put this back in the refrigerator so it keeps a nice consistency, nice and cold. I'll pull out the dumplings and we're gonna cook them and basically go through the, what we call the, not so much the blanching process, but we're going to cook them from hot to cold. And that way we can retain the shape of the dumplings and also it'll keep them from overcooking. So the only thing I'm going to do before I take anything out or put anything in the refrigerator is make sure that my salted boiling water is actually boiling. So I turned it up and I have it boiling here. What I'm gonna do is add a little bit of, I'm actually gonna steal a little bit of his gr rich Greek olive oil and I'm gonna add a couple of, couple of dabs of this oil into here. I've already seasoned it and that's gonna help me or help us from actually having to separate the dumplings. They're actually going to be able to cook and move around in the water and the oil helps that too. So let me grab this. Sure. I'll put this in and we'll pull out the dumplings. Okay, so like I said before, Chris, 
I've taken out the dumplings out of the refrigerator and that's given it time for them to just kind of harden up a little bit so I can handle them. I have my water here, which is rapidly boiling. It's salted and we put a little bit of that super rich Greek olive oil in there. Now I'm going to whisk them. And you know, you've seen this before with me. I do it with pasta, but I also am going to do it with these ricotta cheese dumplings. As the water spins around and I pop these dumplings in, it will stop them from sticking to the bottom, simply because the dumplings weigh more than the water. And naturally, if it weighs more than water, it's going to sink. So this helps me from having to scrape them off the bottom. I'm now going to find a spot in the pan where I'm not damaging the dumplings, but I'm just going to give it one more whisk. And that's it. That's perfect. What I have here is my ice water with a slotted spoon or a spider, we call them sometimes. And that's going to enable me, obviously, to take the dumplings out of the boiling water. So that's what we're waiting for right now, just for these dumplings to come to the surface. They usually take about two to three minutes and they'll just start popping up. Once they pop up, straight into the ice water, it cools them immediately, helps to keep their shape. We'll just saute these off in a little bit of olive oil or a little bit of butter, give them some richness and they'll be done perfect. So literally from start to finish, you could make these dumplings in probably 10 minutes if you've got everything weighed out, that is. So as you can see now, oh, they're just starting to rise like this. We're moving them around. I'm guaranteed they're not sticking to the bottom. So my next step now is to literally come across, take as many as I can out at one time and into the ice water. And that will stop the cooking process down like we talked about. Perfect. Now, the way I like to find out if they're completely chilled is just to grab hold of one of the dumplings and kind of hold them in your hand. And you'll feel the warmth inside your palm. They're still warm, obviously. So I'm going to give them a few minutes just for them to cool completely down, OK? OK, so now we're going to just warm up some pita bread. Doesn't take very long as long as the, the grill is hot. We're going to flip them over a few times just to get them nice and soft. We'll take them over there, we'll cut them, and we'll use that for our plating. It's going to go very well with the tzatziki and also the lamb that, that Andrew's going to make. So it's a perfect accompaniment of any dish that you make in the Mediterranean. The Greeks, all the Mediterraneans, they eat a lot of bread. So that's one of those things that you want to have on your menu at all times. We're going to take it over here. We're going to just cut it super easy and have it ready for the plate when the rest is finished. Bobby Botina's Mexican and American Grill, now at the River and Rancho Mirage. Bobby Botina's, live entertainment, great food, cool vibes. See you at Bobby Botina's. I got what it takes. I've got what it takes. I've got what it takes. Welcome to Desert Outreach Synagogue, the voice of the valley. A place called home to anyone who needs one. A place of incredible music, community, conversation, and connection. Come join us. You already belong. Hello, I'm Carlos King. My passion is designing fabulous homes. I work closely with my clients to achieve the look and feel that matches their vision. My greatest satisfaction is the wow factor when my clients see our finished project. Let me translate your dreams into a visual reality. Call me at 760-880-9987. So you finally made it to retirement, but now you are struggling to pay your bills and you worry that you have no options. You can stop worrying because if you're 62 years or older and you own your own home, there's a quick and easy solution to getting the money you need to enjoy your retirement. 
Call Essex Mortgage now about how you can get a reverse mortgage. Essex Mortgage is an equal housing lender and is not affiliated with any state or federal agency. Loans are subject to credit approval. Loans made or arranged pursuant to a California financing law license number 603-G833, NMLS 70377. Thank you to Gelata Granucci for providing closed captioning for the hearing impaired. There's two rices I like to use when I make this lamb dish. is uh, either a basmati rice or a jasmine rice, which is kind of a long grain rice. At the end, we're going to add a little surprise. I'm actually going to add some Turkish sun-dried apricots and some golden raisins. But first of all, we're going to cook the basic rice. So the best way to do this is to get your measurements correctly on your water to rice ratio. So most people go two to one, which is a good estimate. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do one cup of my jasmine rice or basmati into some salted boiling water. So I've got that boiling already. Okay, I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny bit of butter. And if you're not a, a, a big dairy fan, use a tad of olive oil will work too. I'll make sure this is seasoned up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it one little whisk. Okay, one little whisk around like this. And that's going to get the rice off the bottom of the saucepan. It's still boiling, but we don't want it to rapidly boil because we'll lose that liquid. And remember, we're basing this on a rice to water ratio. So I'm going to turn it down to a simmer. And I like to put a lid on this. And usually about 15 minutes is what I gauge it from, depending on the quantity. So it could be as quick as 10 minutes. But generally, I check it at about 10 and see where we're at with the rice. And I'll show you how we check it when we get to that stage. All right, Chris, so now we've got to the main protein part. So this is kind of my side. So we've got our ground lamb. I'm going to add one egg. So Go that's my like, kind of binding agent. It's going to help it cook. I'm going to need four spoons of the sumac. Okay. Just level, though, not huge, just level. That's perfect. Four of those. Now we're going to move down the array of spices. We're using cumin, coriander, gram masala, which is kind of like a very mild curry flavor, and then a little bit of nutmeg, believe it or not. So we've gone from four, I need to go two, two, one, and half. Got it. So as Chris is actually adding the next spice, I'm going to kind of blend this in. You do need your hands for this, though, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes the wooden spoon, the spatula, just doesn't cut it. Perfect. All right, so a quick move around just to beat that egg. Hands go in. And I want to spread these spices around. All right, so let's divide this up. All right. So that's yours. We can work up the same board together. And then again, I just kind of roll it out. And then I just do a division. Make it into two. I'm going to make mine into four different portions. And I'm going to roll them. And then from here, what we'll do is we'll pop them in the refrigerator again for just a few minutes to let them harden up or chill down. So we'll pull out a few of these skewers which have been saturated in water for 30 minutes. So a little torpedo shaped like that. And then we can simply, I like to do two per portion and then we're going to sit them like that. So if you want to skewer yours, so let's pop these in, hands are clean. We'll give it a bit of a clean up and then we'll check our rice. Basically, we've had the rice going for about 11 minutes, I think it is, and it looks like it's perfectly cooked. So what I'm gonna do now is, remember I talked about adding some sun-dried fruits. Uh, Chris, do you mind uh, chopping these Turkish apricots? Absolutely. So these are beautiful, I love using these. And this gives the actual rice a little bit of a different flavor profile. And then we're going to add some golden raisins. I'm going to show you how you can tell whether your rice is cooked or whether it's not cooked. As I take the lid off the rice and you look at it like this, you can see that all the water has evaporated. Now, the water has evaporated into the rice to help it cook. What I don't want to do is disturb this rice if it's not cooked. What I do want to do is take a couple of grains off the top like that with my spoon. Check it, it's perfect, it's cooked. And you can see by adding that little knob of butter or olive oil, you see how it just fluffs up? It's beautiful, doesn't need seasoning, always you add the salt, and that's how you make a perfect jasmine or basmati rice. Now to take it to another level, you can do a couple of things. You can add some really, really nice fruit. So you wanna lob that in there, Chris. 
and, and I'll just mix it. So we've got some Turkish apricots now and some golden raisins. What other fruits we can use is a little sun-dried cranberries, um, any fruit you really like. You could add ginger to this. So that's our rice ready. It looks beautiful. Yeah, so to keep this warm, I'm gonna put the lid back on. It's not gonna be on any heat, but I'm gonna keep it on the stove to keep it nice and warm for when we're ready for Play-Doh. So as you can see, these have been in there about 10 minutes. They firmed up really nicely. And what that enables me to do is to be able to actually cook these, handle them, and they don't lose their shape. I'm using a grill plate here in the kitchen, but I wanna put a little bit of protection. So I'm gonna use a little bit of olive oil and a paper towel or a regular towel, whatever you want to use. And with this hot plate, I'm just gonna rub it with a little bit of oil. So next step, let's get these on. You can hear that sizzle. We're gonna sear these off. Now normally these take about eight to 10 minutes to cook. So I like my lamb medium rare and there's nothing wrong with eating ground lamb medium rare too. People like it medium, medium well, well done. To me, I think it loses a little flavor. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna concentrate on getting these cooked medium rare. Now what I wanna finish these dishes with some color and some more kind of what we call European vegetables, which is zucchini. What we're gonna do though, is gonna take it a little step further and use these little summer squash, they're yellow. Thank you, Chris. All right, so these are the little summer squash I was talking about. So I like to just grill these. Again, a little bit of olive oil on my grill plate here, not too much, just enough so they don't stick. And then we're gonna just pop these on here and we're gonna grill them at the side of our lamb. So a little bit of pepper. We can season up the actual kebabs as well now. A little salt, a little pepper in those. So we do have this grill on a medium heat and you can see, look, by rubbing it with that little bit of oil, helps them not to stick. And then I'm just gonna use a flat spatula and I'm gonna flip them over. Look at those. Look how nice they look. They look delicious. They do, don't they? They smell even better. Yeah. And I, I honestly, this is one of my favorite lamb dishes. It really is. So that's where we're at. So let's have a quick recap. Chris was kind enough to make his favorite Greek a compliment, which is the... Tzatziki sauce. Tzatziki sauce. We made a rice. Chris added the Turkish figs and some golden raisins to it. Together we made these beautiful lamb kebabs with sumac, coriander, cumin, a little bit of gram masala. Um, and then we're gonna finish it now here with our squash. And then the last component to the dish will be our little ricotta dumplings. And you know what we can do? We can put them on here too to reheat. But making this dish, we can kind of just be with our family and friends and be outside or inside, because we're actually not running around that much. We're just cooking it all on this little flat top. So again, I'm gonna portion these off to about uh, three little dumplings each. And what we're gonna do is gonna get a nice little brown sear on them, little color, and then we'll put the dish together at the end. Look at that, it looks beautiful, it doesn't looks it? It looks delicious, Yeah, it's like yes. a mixed plate of grilling. <laughs> Excellent. When you think of Palm Springs, you think of sunshine, palms, and beautiful backyard pools. Let Sunny Palm Pool Service take the worry out of maintaining the most important pool around, yours. Sunny Palm Pool Service offers concierge service for your pool or spa. Top quality and reliable maintenance and repairs. Sunny Palm Pool Service. We'll do the work, you do the relaxing. Call Rod at 760-333-4804. Bobby Botina's Mexican and American Grill, now at the River and Rancho Mirage. Bobby Botina's, live entertainment, great food, cool vibes. See you at Bobby Botina's. I got what it takes. I've got what it takes. I've got what it takes. Hi, I'm Henry. And I'm Steve. Together we represent exotic motor cars here in Palm Springs. For the last 30 years, we've been the Valley's leading supplier of pre-owned exotic, luxury and classic cars. Don't just dream it, drive it. Cornerstone Insurance Services is an independent brokerage firm that represents dozens of insurance carriers for all lines of insurance. We want to be your personal insurance agent to help navigate your best options and benefits. 
Looking for a safe and fun outdoor adventure? Then let Palm Springs world famous Red Jeep Tours transport you to a desert wonderland. Choose from a variety of exciting adventures. Journey through the bones of the earth on our signature San Andreas Fault Tour at our private and exclusive Matate Ranch. Explore narrow walled slot canyons, a natural palm oasis, and learn about local Native American culture. Red Jeep Tours, offering experiences that engage, educate, and entertain since 1988. Well, I think we've put together a fantastic dish here. So here's what I'd like to do. We have to have a competition. I mean, we're both very competitive in our winter sports. We go to the same gym. Now, I think we'll do what I've been doing with the others. It's whoever gets the better plate up. Okay. And the loser has to cook dinner for your family or my family. Loser right. cooks for the other's family. Yeah. Done deal. Deal? I'm into it. Before though, let me have a look at this. This looks incredible. Look how thick that yogurt is after all the liquid you've added. I, I'm telling you, this is this is something that we bring into the restaurant directly from Greece. Yeah. And we bring it on a regular basis so that we can keep it fresh, of course, because it's yogurt. All right, so let's start the plate up then. All right. I am going to bring over the uh, rest of the ingredients. So just to be clear, that's your plate, right? This that, is that's, th your that's, that's your challenge that's, plate. That is not my final challenge plate. No way. No? No. Okay. All right, let's go, baby. All right. Now, we don't have to talk now because it's serious. Okay. Let's see what... I knew he'd go for the smear. What is it with the smear? Everybody does the smear. It's for the meatballs. Okay. I'm gonna go center. I guess I can't keep my mouth shut. I have to talk. All right, center for me. I'm looking at Chris. He's taking those little ricottas. So I'm going in and I'm gonna go with my lamb. I'm picking the biggest piece of lamb and I'm gonna elevate it. And you can see I'm still keeping the skewers in there too. Now, oh, I see, I see your game. Let's talk I more see work. your game. Let's talk more work. These summer squash, I'm gonna sit them at the side and then I've got my two. See, you've gone really fine dining. I'm going like the way. The way it should be. Family style, I family agree. style. I agree. And just to out trump him, I'm going to put the last pieces of pita bread on mine. All right, Chris, so two entirely different presentations. I gotta, I gotta give it to you, actually. I'll give it to you. I think yours is a little bit more refined. Well, as a respectful chef, I'd give it to you, so I guess we're at a draw. Okay, so we'll just have one big dinner party. <laughs> sure. All right, let's give this a taste. I'm gonna try this, this yogurt here. Mmm. It really is. That's delicious. Very, I very would good. eat this yogurt just with a pita bread, too. Mm hmm. Mm. This is good. So we could call it a draw. However, we forgot the rice. We sure did. And I'm the one who just <laughs> remembered, so I win. I win. Let's get some of these All rice. All right, I'll give it to you. I'll give it you to you. You will? Here you are. Okay. So this is our rice, which both of us, two qualified professional chefs <laughs> with years of experience, forgot to put one component on the table, on the actual dish. So again, this is our basmati or um, jasmine rice with the Turkish apricots and do you want me to put some yes, on those? Please. That would be and great. golden raisins. Now that will finish it, but I'll take the victory on this one because oh. I remembered at the very last minute. Chris, thanks for coming and cooking with me. It was a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. And I will see all of you next week.